Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the channel. Uh, we have uploaded already videos about anatomy of nose and paranasal sinuses. The links for those videos are there in the description. So you can check it out. Today we will talk about the physiology of uh, nose and paranasal sinuses. So let's start today's discussion. You are requested to subscribe, like and share the channel. Don't forget to share it with your friends so that it can be beneficial for them as well. So as far as the physiology of nose is concerned, we know that nose is a part of upper respiratory airway and uh, so primary objective is that it helps in respiration and during respiration the inspired air uh, that not only air conditioning of that inspired air is being done but there is a function of nose which helps in protection of the lower airway and then vocal resonance because during speech uh, certain consonants especially they are being uh, spoken through nose then there are certain reflex actions like sneezing and uh, olfaction is also one of the primary function of the nose we have to smell and the olfactory epithelium is located there in the roof of the nasal cavity and last but not the least is that cosmetically it is very important so that is also one of the functions of the nose uh, because uh, can you imagine a face without nose there can be difference of opinion and both can be right at the same time because uh, they are looking at uh, any object from a different angle. So their perception can be different and still they can be correct. So during respiration, the air conditioning of the inspired air is being done and that is, that is the filtration and the purifies of the air. and. Uh, at the same time it adjusts its temperature and humidity before it is being passed on to the lungs. Nasal vibrisi which are present in the nasal vestibule, uh, they can filter the particles up to 3 microns while the nasal mucus traps the particles of 0.5 to 0.3 microns. Nasal mucous membrane in the region of middle and inferior turbinate is highly vascular with cavernous venous spaces which control the blood flow and they maintain the temperature. Nasal mucous membrane adjusts the relative humidity of inspired air to 75% or more and it has got a significant effect on gas exchange in lower airway. By the way, you will come across these terms upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract again and again in your fourth year and final year as well. Upper respiratory tract anatomically is up to the larynx. So it means when we use the word up to the larynx, it means the larynx and downward is the lower airway. So upper airway will include nose, nasopharynx, oropharynx which is common for gastrointestinal and uh, uh, respiratory airway and from oropharynx then it goes to the airway goes to towards the larynx so up to oropharynx it is upper airway from larynx trachea bronchi bronchioles up to alveoli that is lower airway so coming back to the functions of the nose that is protection of the lower airway the mucociliary mechanism helps in protection that nasal mucosa is rich in goblet cells, mucus and serous secretory glands. So their secretions, they form a mucus blanket which is floating on the top of the cilia which is constantly beating to carry it like a conveyor belt. So inspired bacteria, viruses and dust particles which are being entrapped and filtered by nasal vibrisi and this mucus blanket, they are entrapped and they are on the viscous mucus blanket and they are carried towards the nasopharynx and from there they are being swallowed. 
These cilia, they beat 10 to 20 times per second at room temperature. As you can see in the picture that these are the cilia which are beating towards this side and above that is a serous layer and then is the mucus layer and these particles untrapped dust particles or inspired bacteria or whatsoever it is they are moving towards the nasopharynx because these cilia they beat towards the nasopharynx so they are being carried out and this one way movement of these uh, entrapped particles is being maintained uh, because of a rapid effective stroke towards the nasopharynx and there is slow recovery stroke in opposite direction of these cilia so that this conveyor belt mechanism is working efficiently. Nasal secretions also contains immunoglobulin especially IgA and IgE interferons and enzyme muramidase that is lysozyme so it helps in protection sneezing is a protective reflex action which is induced by foreign particles which irritate the nasal mucosa so they are being expelled out from the nose instead of being inhaled and carried to the lower respiratory tract nose forms a resonating chamber for certain consonants in phonating the nasal consonants like ma, na, na. This sound passes through the nasopharyngeal isthmus and is emitted through the nose. Then there are certain reflex actions of the nose. One of them is uh, sneezing. Then smell of palatable food. It causes reflex secretions of saliva and gastric juices which helps in digestion of the food of course. Irritation of the nasal mucosa causes sneezing which is a protective function. The nasal function is closely related to pulmonary functions through nasobronchial and nasopulmonary reflexes. When some uh, foreign body is there in the nose immediately there will be sneezing and at the same time there will be bronchoconstriction so that the lower airway is also on defense. That's what we call as nasobronchial and nasopulmonary reflexes. Olfaction is a, it plays a critical role in enjoying the taste of food. When nose is blocked, you would have experienced yourself that then food tastes bland and unpalatable. Olfactory area of the nose is there. Olfactory epithelium is present in the roof of the nasal cavity. That's what we call as the cribriform plate. From there, the olfactory nerves pass through mitral cells of olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, and then it goes to the pre-pyriform cortex and amygdaloid nucleus. As far as the function of the sinuses, paranasal sinuses is concerned, they help in humidifying and warming the inspired air, regulation of intranasal pressure, increasing the surface area for olfaction, lightening the skull because these are the air filled spaces in certain bones of the face and skull. So they lighten the skull. Uh, resonance also being added in sound. They absorb the shock and they contribute to facial growth and they act as a thermal insulator to protect the delicate structures in the orbit and cranium. Now these uh, sinuses, they are being ventilated during expiration because during inspiration, the air current passes along the portion of the nasal cavity in lamellar flow with speed. So there is negative pressure due to negative pressure because whenever air passes from somewhere with speed, its pressure is less so that the um, paranasal sinuses, they are being emptied during inspiration. While during expiration, there are eddy currents. I just explained these currents in the next slide. So they are being ventilated during expiration. As far as the drainage of the nasal, paranasal sinus secretions are concerned, from the anterior groups, uh, the secretions are being drained along the lateral pharyngeal gutter, while the posterior group that drain along the posterior pharyngeal wall. 
this is the picture which will uh, uh, describe the ventilation of the paranasal sinuses we were just talking about during quiet inspiration air passes through the middle part of the nose between turbinate and the nasal septum and very little air passes through the inferior meatus or olfactory area while during expiration during expiration when this air comes at the nasal valve area there at the due to the resistance offered by the anterior end of the inferior turbinate and lyman nasi this air current is converted into eddies instead of lamellar flow which is there during inspiration during expiration due to this resistance at lyman nasi or nasal valve level they are being set into eddy currents and due to these eddy currents the middle meatus is being ventilated and from the middle meatus through the natural ostia of the paranasal sinuses it goes and it ventilates the paranasal sinuses so paranasal sinuses they are being ventilated during expiration while during inspiration they are being emptied in 1895 mr kesar first described the nasal cycle which means that the nasal mucosa it undergoes rhythmic cyclical congestion and decongestion and thus thus controlling the air flow every 2 to 4 hours this means a one nasal cavity will be working more as compared to other and other one will be you can say in a resting mode and then after 2 to 4 hours this job is being replaced by other nasal cavity so with that we come to the end of today's discussion you are requested to subscribe the channel and also like it and share it with your friends and thanks for watching